So we're just moving along through this Bible study here of mine. I got my little um, friend who's a cute little horsey with a little Wild West theme going on. And we're going to start talking a little bit about some calamities because my oh my, Job has got, we're in the book of Job, a lot of calamity going on in his life like a lot of people do right now. And um, we're going to talk about some props. So I have a gift that was given to me by a friend for helping him move because I didn't want to take any money from him because he was struggling. But he did give me a gift and it's a picture <laughs> of a gun um, to remind me that I'm writing under the gun. I'm working under the gun. And um, one of the other things I like to do sometimes just to calm me down is um, this is a singing bowl and it sounds like it's like a call to peace and a call to just calm down and take it all in and let life unfold on life's terms because it usually does. So now, chapter 18. Bildad is back. I like that name, Bildad. I feel sorry for some dads. <laughs> but they have to take care of the bills. So Bildad the shoe height replied, When will you end these speeches? Be sensible and then we can talk. Why are we regarded as cattle and considered stupid in your sight? Well, I've been called stupid before because I've been told that there's something wrong with my brain because I like to read books and I have some, you know, dumb shit Oregonian friends that are just a bunch of dumb shits. So, we sit around and talk about things like uh, philosophy and etymology and um, psychology and all sorts of concepts like the birth order and narcissism and socialism and fascism and all those kind of fascinating penis issues about dickheads and dickwads and where the root words of everything came from. Like it could have been a little mixture of like Latin mm -hmm, and maybe some, you know, German mm -hmm, and uh, English and those UK things. And we talk about the news and what's going on in the BBC channel and the NPR news as opposed to what's going on with the propaganda films like Trump is trying to promote because, you know, we do also talk about things like businesses and business concepts and wealth and whatever, all that kind of crap that, you know, stupid, dumb shit people talk about like union workers and whether or not we're a blue collar or a white collar or if we don't even have a collar, you know, for more like a t-shirt worker or, you know, factories and whether t-shirt factories or, you know, is that a good thing and slavery and all that kind of stuff? You know, Nike, Bill Knight, uh-huh. Oh, you know one of the wealthiest people now is obviously the owner of Amazon. <laughs> uh, online sales are up. So, those brick and mortar stores, you know, they're just uh, shut down. It's like a ghost town in most places. But hey, on we go. Then Bildad the Shuite replied, when will you end all these speeches and are we considered stupid in your sight? You who tear yourself to pieces in your anger. Don't do that. There's enough people out there that'll tear you to pieces for you. Don't tear yourself to pieces. It's not worth it. And if people pick on you, especially if you're the baby of a family, I have a baby in my family. I'm the baby. A lot of people are babies that I know. They got picked on. But if, they, if you've got siblings that pick on you, don't listen to them. They're full of shit. Anyways, <clears throat> even if you're in the middle or you're the oldest, just don't listen to shit. 
You tear yourself to pieces in your anger. Is the earth to be abandoned for your sake? Or must the rocks be moved from their place? The lamp of the wicked is snuffed out. The flame of his fire stops burning. The light in his tent becomes dark. And the lamp beside him goes out. The vigor of his step is weakened. His own schemes throw him down. His feet thrust him into a net. And he wanders into its mesh. You know, one time I was dressed for Halloween and I was wearing some fishnet stockings and I had a wig on and I had blue eyes. I was dressed up as a hooker for Halloween and I'm not a hooker. <laughs> but anyways, a woman in the town I was born and raised, she saw me in a thrift store and she told me I was going to go to hell for dressing up in a costume, wearing fishnet stockings. That's I'm going to go to hell. Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm not going to go to hell for wearing fishnet stockings or for dressing up for Halloween. No, that, no, no, that's not where you go to hell. No, no. I also did some theater um, makeup one time where I ripped out my eyeballs and raised money for shelter care, dancing to the Michael Jackson thriller for Halloween. And I had some people tell me I was going to go to hell for doing that too. A lot of people seem to think that they have a corner on hell and who gets to go there and who doesn't. I know who gets to go to hell. A trap seizes him by the heel. A snare holds him fast. A noose is hidden for him on the ground. A trap lies in his path. Terrors startle him on every side and dog his every step. Calamity is hungry for him. Disaster is ready for him when he falls. As like Calamity Jane meets the vampires. <laughs> you, know, you know, that's one thing in literature. You do a lot of um, resurrecting historical figures and then introducing them to fantastical concepts like Abraham Lincoln and the zombies or Abraham Lincoln and the vampires. Calamity Jane meets the zombies. And that's an idea. Actually, I, um, that, yeah, that would be a fun story. Bring back Calamity Jane and have her dance to Michael Jackson's Thriller like a zombie. Hmm. That'd be fun. Anyways, <clears throat> it eats away parts of his skin. Death's firstborn devours his limbs. That sounds like a, uh, a bite from a hobo spider. It eats away parts of his skin. You don't want to get bit by a hobo spider. And you don't want to take certain drugs like that crocodile because that'll rot you from the inside out. You'll look like a real life zombie. Blech. Don't do that. He is torn from the security of his tent and marches off to the king of terrors. and marched off to the king of terrors. Fire resides in his tent. Burning sulfur is scattered over his dwelling. His roots dry up below and his branches wither above. The memory of him perishes from the earth. He has no name in the land. That would be somebody like Hannibal. Um, not Hannibal Lecter from the movie, but Hannibal the general that took the elephants over the Alps. Nobody much knows too much about Hannibal, it seems, anymore. Um, that's why I did not name one of my sons Hannibal like my ex-husband wanted to. I said, no, we're not doing that because nobody hardly knows about the general. Um, it's, it's kind of fun to know historical tidbits and facts, but you have to kind of have a little bit of social intelligence, too, <laughs> I think. Why would anyone name their children Corona and COVID? Like, someone named their twins Corona and COVID that were just born during this time period. That's like naming your kids measles and mumps or death and destruction <laughs> or pestilence and plague. What are they hoping for their children's future? 
<laughs> I guess Corona can mean crown. COVID is, uh, yeah, COVID could be a cool name down the road if everyone's going to forget about this whole time period. <laughs> it's like naming your kids Hitler and Stalin. <laughs> God. Uh. But I guess in a couple hundred years from now, no, no one's going to remember any of us. Huh. Okay, so he's driven. Blah, 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 blah. He has no offspring or descendants among his people. No survivor where once he lived. Okay, I have some friends that don't have any kids. They're the end of the line. I told him, I said, wow, that makes you sacred because it took a lot of people to get you here. And if you choose not to have any kids, you're the end of your family root of that particular root of that particular branch. Anyone who dies before they have a chance to have children, that's the end of the line of all the people all down through history that took for them to get here. So when I look at people, I look at us all as sacred because it took a lot of work to get us here. So when someone dies, it's sad. <sighs> Men of the West are appalled at this fate. Yes, we are. I am. I'm appalled. I'm appalled on a daily basis. I'm just appalled. I'm shocked and I'm dismayed and I'm offended. Men of the West are appalled at this fate. Men of the East are seized with horror. Surely such is the dwelling of an evil man. Such is the place of one who knows no God. There are godless nations. Sometimes I wonder if we're one of them. We talk about God, but I don't know if we actually behave like God. I don't know how much sacrifice I'm willing to make for strangers. I mean, I've, I've done my share. And um, some strangers are dangerous. There is that thing called stranger danger. And some family members can be dangerous too. And they can be cruel and harsh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I married into a, a very harsh family. And, the, and they've had uh, some harsh, hard times, lots of uh, death and trauma. I think my ex-mother-in-law did a trauma tour from England. She just came over here from England and went to Oklahoma and landed in my hometown and then went back to England. And I think she's back over here in the States. And that woman just seems to have trauma follow her everywhere she goes. And she kind of brought some of it into my world. But that's okay because I was born under trauma too and I can do the same thing if I wanted to just do a trauma tour once this coronavirus passes I might do that I might do a comedy tour because tragedy bursts comedy and I'd like to do a road trip and do some stand-up comedy that's one of my goals <laughs>